Happy Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to Hour 2 of the Kerry Champion Show. I'm Julie Stewart-Binks. Now, the Premier League starts back up this weekend. It feels like it just ended. Um, one question, though, is where is Harry Kane going to end up? And where we are right now is that if the season starts, he's going to stay with Tottenham, but if Bayern Munich's bid that they are submitting, I feel like at this moment goes through, he will be going over to Germany. So if you are a Premier League supporter or a Spurs fan, I'm sorry for whatever happens with you. Regardless of that, there has been many uh, players, a plethora of talent that have gone over to the Saudi Pro League. We saw that with Cristiano Ronaldo going after the World Cup, and then it's just been an influx of big names like Karim Benzema, who spent 14 years at Real Madrid, and N'Golo Kante, Sadio Mane, Khalidou Kalab. Uh, Kulabali, Edward Mendy, and just it continues every single day, a new player going over to the Saudi Pro League. Now, we know that when you're over there, they currently don't have a Champions League spot, and they're not competing in the Champions League. I do believe that will happen at some point, just based on all the money that they have. But uh, the thing is, is that you can't really see them play at this moment. I also think that the U.S. will have rights at some point to be able to see these players in the Saudi Pro League. But one player that turned down all of that money, and it was a, a huge story, of course, was Kylian Mbappe. And he was offered over $700 million, uh, the club, PSG, over $300 million in transfer fees. And that was, I, I can't even say it without laughing, $1.1 billion for one year of Kylian Mbappe to go to Al Halal in the Saudi Pro League. And he turned it down. He didn't even meet with representatives from Saudi Arabia when they came over to Paris. It would have been a very long plane ride back without the guy that you are willing to just spend every penny on. And uh, the biggest thing for Mbappe, as we know, is that he wants to play in Europe. He wants to win a Champions League someday. And we know that he can't do that for that year that they were looking for in Saudi Arabia. And he had already told PSG that he was not going to be taking up that extra year of his contract from 2024 to 2025. And so this is what makes for a, an odd situation for both sides. There is likely a deal in place or a deal to be in place for Mbappe to go to Real Madrid next summer. This is a club that he has grown up wanting to play for and he has been sort of open about being a fan of the club. And actually, Carlos Alcaraz, who just won Wimbledon, the Spaniard, said that he hopes that Mbappe goes to the um, Real Madrid, which uh, I don't know. Does that sway him at all? We'll have to see. One of the clubs that he was linked to going to was, of course, Liverpool. And a guy on Twitter with 2,000 followers said that maybe MLS was an option. And that was not Don Garber. We know that they have already sold the farm to Messi. So it's unlikely that Mbappe comes here. But hey, we've seen crazier things happen. Now, uh, according to multiple sources, Mbappe wants to stay at PSG for this season. And then, of course, next season, go to Real Madrid. But the problem is that if he does do that, PSG is left with nothing. He walks away on a free transfer, and a club that had been offered over $300 million by Saudi Arabia now ends up with nothing. So what I've heard from a source in England is that he is likely going to be sold to Real Madrid before this season starts. Because right now Mbappe and the conversations with him and PSG are really at a standstill. He didn't go on their tour in Asia and he's been playing with sort of fringe players just keeping up his fitness. He likely won't feature this weekend when the league gets going. So they'll probably send him to Real Madrid force this transfer so that they can get something in return. This is a, a guy that has scored 212 goals for your club. He's a Ballon d'Or winner. He's a, a generational transcendent talent. You can't just let him walk away for free. I understand where the club's coming from, and especially knowing that he's going to leave. The one person that's going to be really hurt by this the most, of course, is French President uh, Emmanuel Macron, Macron, because he was, man, following the guy around the World Cup, final loss last year, do you remember that? After Kylian Mbappe was just really disappointed that they had lost to Argentina, and, sorry, Macron, I just, I can't 
not think of the World Cup final without thinking of Macron just like a drunk guy all over a girl at a bar and Mbappe was just like, please, like, leave me alone. But Macron has some time now to sort of lick his wounds and realize that uh, Mbappe is at least leaving at some point, but he will be back for the French national team. Now, making things a little bit more complicated for PSG is the fact that French paper L'Equipe has uh, reported that Neymar, the other guy on the team that's still there, uh, also wants to get out. And he his contract is until 2025. So the situation is different in regards to Mbappe because uh, the team would like him to go. They would like to sell him off. Uh, I know that it maybe hasn't necessarily worked out, especially with the three of them when they had Neymar, Mbappe, and Messi. We all kind of maybe assumed, thought, potentially they would have been like the big three for the Miami Heat with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. They did quite well together. These guys, not so much. So it's a bit unfortunate that something wasn't able to come about. But it's complicated with Neymar. He wants to go to Barcelona, wants, a, wants to go back there. That's where he came from in 2017. But he's a different player since then. He is older and less effective, for one. Barcelona has financial issues he also would be entering into a situation where there's a number of core young players and they would all have to play the style in which Neymar would want them to play and that would be not conducive to success at this point point. and so there are there's drama that support that surrounds Neymar at different points but he is still you know a guy that can do something for you but you can't build your team around him or sort of let him just force his way around the world he could though end up in chelsea and i mean that would be very interesting to see how he would do with that rebuild now going forward really psg has to look at a future without mbappe and they already have they've signed young talent gonzalo ramos that we saw at the world cup from Benfica. He's a young player. He's strong. He's good in the air and he scores goals. Goals also what Mbappe does. And they're also trying to solidify a deal with Usman Dembele from Barcelona. And they're also looking to add some more younger prospects and pieces. Now, we know that PSG might be in a bit of a situation right now where they don't want to get bullied around. They've, they've seen Zlatan sort of push them around. They saw one of their other players, Lionel Messi, leave. And so that's why they're being pretty hard and fast on this. But speaking of Lionel Messi, boy, has he made an impact in America. Inter Miami's very own seven goals in four matches, including two goals against Against FC Dallas on the road in League's Cup. He has been absolutely en fuego since he made it to America. And even his former teammates from Barcelona, Jordi Alba, had an assist in this match against FC Dallas. They were down 4-2. They managed to tie it up and they went to penalties. And of course, what happens? They win. The Messi effect is everywhere. It's on ticket prices that were originally around $40. Now they're around $1,000. That's not, you know, great Messi effect. But he has an effect on players on the pitch. Robert Taylor, his teammate, Joseph Martinez, two players that have really elevated their game since, of course, the World Cup winner has arrived. And then even players on the other teams, they have said that seeing the greatest of all time go up against them has made them feel as though they can use it as a litmus test to see sort of where they stand when, when they're on the pitch against one of the greatest, of course. He is nearing the end of his career, but he's still extremely effective and it looks like he's just having the time of his life in Miami and we love to see a happy Lionel Messi because usually that means that he is winning and doing well but do have to address the fact we've talked a lot of soccer on the show so far but there is a lot of soccer going on in the world and that's something that Rafael Varane said that there's maybe too much soccer I don't know. He said that with rule changes going on in EPL this year, which are really to try to clamp down on time wasting by timing interruptions, you know, when guys are just rolling around on the pitch and whatnot. Uh, one referee said that matches will likely be over 100 minutes long. So Varane took to Twitter. He said that these rule changes are damaging the game. And he had said that for many years, managers and players have shared their concerns that there's too many games. The schedule is overcrowded and it's dangerous for players, physical and mental well-being and I honestly think that he has a point because when you look at how many games and matches these players have to play for their club for their if they're playing in Europe as well for different trophies and playing for their countries they're playing in qualifiers for euros for world cup qualifiers 
we, let, we saw this summer the uh, Con CONCACAF Nations League and then, of course, the Gold Cup for the U.S. We're in back-to-back -back weeks. It just, it's just a little too much. And for all of us who love the game, we got to be able to do something else with our lives sometimes, too. We can't just be run by the schedules of the, the teams that we follow. we got to go outside, maybe say hi to our family once in a while. So I think that Veron is on to something. I'm not sure how that will play out because, of course, more matches equals more money for those involved. And just to finish off very quickly, speaking of the, um, the beautiful game, we know that the U.S. Women's National Team is out of the World Cup, but that doesn't mean the World Cup is over. And a lot of young people wouldn't know that because they've seen the U.S. win it so many times. But we saw this morning that Colombia beat Jamaica. Vamos las cafeteras. I was happy to see Colombia win. Of course, uh, they beat Jamaica while doing it, which is something we'll get to in a moment. But with... Um, uh, Colombia, they, they did so well. I, I, I'm happy for these women. They had to fight their federation many years ago, and they have done so well. They've, they've made history for their country, getting to the quarterfinals for the first time ever, and being the only South, um, South American country since 2011, when Brazil was in it, to make it to the quarterfinals. So happy for those women. Sad for Jamaica. We just saw a, a quote there that Jamaica had to go through so much to get to this point. Crowdfunding. They had to fight their federation. They had sent letters to their federation about not having the right support for friendlies. Sometimes they, they weren't even being paid to play, to do any of these friendlies. With two of their crowdfunding uh, two of their crowdfunders that they had, their GoFundMes, I gave $50 to one of them because, and not to give myself an, an award or anything, but it just felt important to be able to support women that are trying to do their best and not having the resources involved. And regardless of where you come from or what team or country you support, we need to be able to invest in these women and these players if they're going to be on the world stage. And they've obviously shown that they can attract the attention and, and, and attract the interest and do well when given the right resources and the women's world cup has been such a great microcosm for i believe what is going on in the rest of the world and kind of really what women are doing in trying to make it a better place for all women anywhere in the world and we're really trying to come together and support everyone we have more to come on that momentarily and coming up sports illustrated senior writer pat forty joins us to discuss a different type of football breakdown uh how the pac-12 in a matter of hours just dissolved and what college football could look like in the future stay with us this is the carry champion show